Hi, I'm Rodney A. Brooks. Welcome to RodneyABrooks.com. Today we're talking with Bobby Kinzer, who is with the Society for Financial Education and Professional Development, a certified financial education instructor. Bobby, yes. welcome. Thank you. Glad okay. to be here, Rodney. Okay. Now, um, and, and you, for instance, okay, you retired. Yes. Okay, and, and, and yet you're still, uh, and then you went to work. Um, at another, it's basically another another career. Yes. Um, and yes. Um, so, and so you have that. So you're you're one of those people who is going to have those multiple streams. I would hope so because I'm going you around telling people all this stuff up here. You probably have five or six of them. <laughs> no, <right>? no. I, <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And I'll be a hypocrite if I didn't, man. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, yeah. I, I I wish I had more to be honest. Uh -huh. And I guess. It's not a greedy thing, but I still feel that I should have more, Rodney. You know what I mean? Because that's what people don't understand about the time value of money. Because some people, when uh, Sugar Ray Leonard was boxing and he had a disconnected retina and, they, and he wouldn't give it up. And they like, why? And a part of it, and we'll talk about being an athlete, you know, but we don't want to know to give it up. But the other part was he's got all his money, but he also know he knew back then, uh, a hundred million dollars today may not be worth a hundred million dollars tomorrow, and 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 you can lose a hundred million just like that. So the time value of money is important because I always talk to the young people. Who you ever have a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? You know, a hundred million later on, and it's about today. And a lot of people uh, who sleep with their money under their pillow and it's not earning thinking that, you know, they saving their money, but it's not keeping up with inflation, not keeping up with taxes. And so if you outlive your money, when they say you have more month at the end of the uh, more yeah, month at the end of the month than money, that's why it's important to have multiple income streams. Okay. So now let's talk about let's talk about your book. Uh, because okay. we're gonna start talking about athletes. Yes. Um, I, um, as one of the many careers you've had, yes. you were a professional basketball player in um, Mostly in Europe, or all in Europe, all in Europe, in Europe. Yep. for how, for how yeah. many years? Five years. Five years. Yes. Okay, in your book, let's show your book. Okay. Um, okay, and so Bobby's book is um, um, available on Amazon. It is on Amazon. Okay. Yes. It's the other side of the hoop. Yes. Okay. The European uh, basketball experience. Okay, and so so yes, yeah, so you know, so let's talk. Tell me about the European basketball experience for a little bit, and then we're going to talk about you know what kind of lessons financial lessons you learned coming right. out of that? Well, the, being from Washington, D.C., up on 14th Street, little black guy uh, from welfare, one of seven children, uh, got a scholarship to go to Penn State University to play basketball, fractured my foot, missed my draft year, but was picked up as an agent, and went to London. England, played in London for two years and Edinburgh, Scotland for three years. And you know how some people always throw this cliche out there, if I had to do it all over again, you know, uh, you know, I would or I wouldn't or, you know. It was the most greatest time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and if I had to do it over again, I would do it different. <laughs> I'll do more of it. And it was the most fascinating, especially, especially when I came from Washington, D.C., being the hub of the world in a, one specific culture, and especially then in the 70s when it was Chocolate City, right? Uh -huh. Predominantly black. Then to go to school up north to Pennsylvania, and then I transferred and I went two years in school in Texas, the south of Texas, and then to go to England, it's like I saw the full circle of America, and it was just, I mean, just like the word says, abroad. It was, it just brought my whole perspective to see that, you know, like in England, they said, Bob, you don't speak English, you speak American. I said, what the world you mean? <laughs> and then when I got to Scotland, I knew exactly, because these people were speaking English, I didn't know what the world they were saying. <laughs> you know, and then Scotland, I didn't see a black person for two months. <laughs> and they would see me, and it's like, oh, that's the first time they ever saw a black person. So it was a true definition of, uh, not discriminating, but uh, racism, because they were just ignorant. So I learned so much about just living in different cultures and being able to, uh, what I've learned was that obstacles was just opportunities for you to do things better. Okay, and okay, and so let's, okay, so 
you know, I don't know. I have no sense of what pay <laughs> pay, right. pay was like back then. Right. But, <laughs> well, yeah. So this is what it was like. Excuse me. This is what the pay was like. So over there, you played for. If you went to the championships where everybody didn't, that and that's where the money was. Um, you would play for. You, you play for eight months, and you get paid for eight months. And the problem with me, because at that time I told you I didn't learn about finances until right. I stopped uh -huh. playing ball. So at that time, you would live, you know, make money for eight, and I would come back to D.C. in the summer. And if anybody knows Washington D.C., especially back then, the seventy, I mean eighties, yeah, seventy eighties, I would spend all that money that I made. So, I, so I was making, I was making around about thirty thousand dollars for eight months, and that was a lot of money back then, and it's a lump sum. And they gave you a car over there, it was right hand drive over there was so interesting. <laughs> and you had a house. But I mean, as long as I was there, I didn't they didn't give me the house. So if that was back then equivalent to somebody make you know, making about sixty, seventy thousand dollars back then. So that was a good living. But uh so that's what in Europe but now they paying six figures and sometimes seven figure salaries now. And I was sorta of like and I could truly say I was like a forefather especially being in Scotland. And what I learned about being a forefather at the time, they were like, man, you blazing, you the pioneer. You know what? The forefathers don't get squat. All them <laughs> young guys are getting paid now over what I helped do, but I have no malice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other side of the hoop available yeah, yes. on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, right? And yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, um, so let's, let's sort of morph into talking about um, athletes because, you know, the stories about Allen Iverson, Antoine Walker blowing Ooh, through their money. Um, a lot of money. And they blew, they blew through millions and millions. But today, it seems to me these guys are sophisticated. Um, and you're not hearing those horror stories like you you did. You got you you know, you're not you got players who who are investing, you know, I'm thinking LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, um, um, actually and some of them are actually very much into financial literacy. Um, yes. um but um so so um, basically is that a lesson learned? These are these guys more educated, more sophisticated or you know, what's it was in my imagination that they seem to be. Hey, Ron, it's interesting you bring that up because you normally always hear people talking about uh, how bad they are with their money, especially NFL players that 60-something percent at one time um, were bankrupt by the time their third year in retirement. And uh, the NBA players, they are, and I can speak of that because I just know a few, they are more sophisticated. And I don't know what was the turning point, right? Because they are being more astute, more educated, more aware. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. I don't know if this is fully true, but I just know partly true, right? I'm not making a... I'll just say what I'll just say. It seems that these guys are not relying on the traditional agents who did not educate them about all the money, they handled their money, and to me it seemed like they kept them uneducated so that they could control their money and make more money off of them. That's just my perception. And it seems like more of these players now have agents that are um, more uh, concerned that way. And then I think the players are wanting to be more involved in understanding from the past situations. So I believe it's a combination of both, but I'm noticing a lot of traditional Agents are not running all, because, I mean, let me give you an example. David Falk had all the players. He had Allen Iverson. I think he had Iverson. I know he had, you know he had Michael Jordan, Patrick Ewing. The list goes on. Adrian Dantley, Kareem, he done stuff. And it was all concentrated in one place. And I don't think they were disseminating the financial information to the players. And I just believe that is the difference now. Okay, great. So... Let's, um, I'm going to, we're going to sort of wrap it up here, but I want, if you got a chance and you have a person, I'm going to ask you about two age groups right now. Okay. You got a person coming out of college. What three pieces of advice would you give them? And secondly, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you 
you got somebody about to go into retirement with three pieces, with three tips would you give them? So, okay. so let's start out with, okay, graduating from college, starting out a new career, mm -hmm. give me three tips. Uh, first, you gotta have a plan. You gotta have a plan, and, 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 and this is kind of twofold, because I'm talking about like a financial plan, but they also should have a career plan too, to, to, you know, and, and it doesn't always have to work out exactly, but at least, you know, the old saying, you know, shoot for the moon if you miss it, fall upon the stars. I believe the first thing is you definitely need to have a plan. And then they need to understand what is their goal. A lot of young people come out and don't understand their whole just salary, um, I mean, just their whole uh, benefits, understand the benefits you're going to get from the, the, the company that you're going with. So, one, understand your benefits for the company that you're going to have a plan and and then uh, don't be afraid to uh, take some chances, take some risk in investing, and, and what I mean, taking more um, uh, 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 risk as far as investing. Don't be so conservative in the investing because you have you have time to recover if you make a mistake. Right? That's yeah. why I say it because you got some time to recover. Right. So, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, high high. I usually teach people about risk. One being very low. And five being very high, and I'm talking. So I'm not talking about very high risk. I'm talking about at least medium, or at least take a little higher risk. But understand, you know, your job benefits. But most young people don't. They don't even calculate their um, uh, pay stubs. They just assume that everything on there is right. But and I know that's taking it to the basics. But to me, that's important. If it's, you know, you don't want to understand what you're getting with benefits that you can maximize on, you know, you know, health savings accounts, uh, flexible accounts. If you don't understand all of these things that are benefits to you, for the 401k plans, how much is matching, that's what I would like to, for the young people starting off, understand that, then have a plan, have a goal, and then stick to it. Okay, so three tips, you're about to retire. Mm -hmm. Three tips about to retire. Um, once again, you got to have a plan. That's what most people, there's three things, Rodney, why people don't do well with their finances. They fail to plan, they lack information, and the third one is misinformation. And the third one usually happens most, that's the information you be getting from your family that be all wrong. <laughs> you know like your broke uncle down at the cookout and he's telling you all these get ricks, quick schemes, and he be broke. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, <clears throat> as you can see, that's why I hop on, have a plan. And it sounds so simple, but one of the first thing is definitely have a plan. Know what your goals are, you know. Know what your time horizon is, you know. And then, and then really, really stick to it and don't be afraid to adjust it as you go along. And that's why I think where most people fail, they just don't have a plan. And that's with younger people or retired, you, you got to first start with a plan. And I would like to tell the people who, you're saying these are people that get ready to retire? Yes. Yeah, 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 and then and then know what is at your disposal. Have get the education and know, because most people just like you said, they just be going off the top of their head. They just jump into retirement. Know and understand all the things that involve your retirement. Okay, um, and let's talk about one that I would add. <laughs> okay, and that, okay, and and it's part of to have a plan, but most people. Just look at the financial plan, and they they end up with retirement. I mean, uh, and and they wake up and like, okay, what am I gonna do? <laughs> okay, so part of the part of having wow. that plan is also uh, figuring out what you're gonna wow. do with the rest of your with the rest of your life, which yes. may be as long as your work life. That's and <laughs> that's a good one. It's interesting because I said that what the younger people <laughs> should do about their careers, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Know what you're gonna do as a career and your financial plan. But it's interesting. That applies to you getting ready to go in retirement because I have, this is what I understand, Rodney, man. I have friends who tell me, Bob, I'm not going to retire because I don't know what I'm going to do. I think that's a sad statement. <laughs> if you're so wedded to your job that you were just so focused just on your job that that's all you know how to do, and it's a myth because I talk to people who say that who are sitting next to me. Nobody works eight straight hours a day. I said, man, you've been sitting over there two hours you went to the gym. You had another hour, so don't tell me you're going to go home and do the same thing you're sitting here at the job. So back to your point, yes, 
know what you're going to do because I've seen people go right back to, to work. And that's so important, man. But I guess, Rodney, for me, it's so interesting because there's so many things to do. And I listen to my older friends. And, um, and this is the thing about financial, about planning, about finances, and I want to say across the board. Most people don't want to do the work. That is even the work to have your financial plan. That is the work to determine what you're going to do after work because it takes work. Most people don't research. They, 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 they don't put the effort in. And I tell people, building wealth takes work. And, and it could be hard, but it's worth doing. But most people, you know, just think it's easy. No, it's not. And I tell people when they start off, this is not going to be easy. And once you get that mindset, that you understand that, then you can go at it, man. But I, with these people, it's, we definitely just need to get more educated, if anything. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming in. Rodney Brooks talking to Bobby Kinzer, former pro basketball player, financial literacy expert, um, wow. and, and, um, and lecturer. So, yes. <laughs> All and, author, and author. So, so thank you for coming in and yeah. talking to us today. Utmost pleasure. It's great. Thank you.